Hey, my legion. How y'all doing today? I'm here today with an obscure slash movie uh, review. And that's Girls' Night Out. When I saw that documentary from, uh, that, what's that, Better, uh, You're All Doomed, the uh, 80s story of the slasher film and stuff like that. I'm kind of a completist. I like to try to see all the independent ones that came out in that time. Most are good, but there's a few that are really lousy. Like, it took me forever to find Prom Night, the original Prom Night. And I didn't find it till 1990 at the video store I was in Fort Bragg, or 90 or 91. I saw it. I was so disappointed by it. And I attempted to watch it once or twice after that, and it was just so boring. Now, most people probably disagree with me, but I, I thought the first one was boring. I liked the sequels. They were all great. The first one was just boring, disappointing and boring. He Knows You're Alone, that's another boring one. Uh, the best thing about that, well, the first 10 minutes were really good, and then you find out it, it was a bogus ending. And then the rest of the movie is boring, except for the one scene Tom Hanks was in. That was his first movie. It was about a guy who was going to uh, get rid of brides to be a lot of wedding planning and stuff like that. It's, like, oh, it's awful. And movies like Curtains, they had a thing of the most underrated movies and stuff like Curtains was stupid, despite the fact that John Vernon was in it. And also, what's another one that's really lousy? Well, those are the three right there. Oh, and also Mad Men, which I just saw not rec uh, not too long ago, like earlier this year or something like that, free on Amazon. That was so bad, bad. The cast was so unappealing, and it was just the acting was. I mean, I don't mind bad acting. I sometimes I embrace it. But I mean, it was just it just made the whole movie boring. It was really boring and lousy. One inventive kill, I think, but the rest was so lousy and boring, I, I lost interest. Now, Girls' Night Out, I found out about this, like, when I watched that last night. I said, well, I wonder if this is available. And I was able to find it on, on YouTube, which was cool. I watched it. And it was, like, one of the ones that came out in 82 or 83. I mean, because it was, like, with the, with the slasher films, they're really popular, the independent ones. And um, let me look this up real quick. In theaters and stuff like that. And then, you know, after Halloween, there was a whole bunch of uh, independent slasher films. Not to mention the bigger budget ones like the Halloween Friday the 13th and stuff like that. Let's see. I want to check. I forgot to look for some. And, uh, you know, a lot of those did really well at uh, in the cinema. You know, okay, Girls Then Out. Okay, 4.8. I want to check something out. There's one thing I forgot to mention before I opened up my mouth. The first one. Okay. That's why I need to know. Well, anyways. You know, there's some boring ones out there. And this one, Girls Night Out, was one I never heard of before. And they said they didn't push it that much. Because sometimes they're really obscure ones that you find out just by accident. Because I remember when I was in Germany, I was looking through uh, the the one in the PX that they had. It was limited. And as there was one horror film called The Prey, which was a slash film. I probably would never heard of ever if I wasn't seeing that. And it was okay. That was one of the ones that didn't do very well. When the slash film was on the decline. At least the independent ones. Because they stuck with Friday the 13th. Nightmare on Elm Street was a big money maker, and also like Halloween when Halloween came back in '88, and uh, that was a uh, it was okay. I barely remembered, but I mean, I, I probably would have never seen it if it wasn't for that. Uh, finding it there, I never would have heard of it. You know, no one talks about that movie. And now Girls' Night Out, they mentioned that in that thing, and I said, okay, I'll check it out. And I, it was all, like I said, it was free on YouTube, and it said, like, it was made in 82, but it wasn't pushed real well. And it was on the decline of, like, the independents not doing well at the, at the uh, independent slash not doing as well at the theaters they used to be. And it revolves around this, uh, uh group of college kids, and they, they were going to have, like, this night of, uh, this, um, oh, what do you call it, scavenger hunt. And apparently there was a scavenger hunt where the guy killed some people, and he was in the insane asylum. And then he's back killing people or whatever. And um, it was the one thing I really liked about it was the cast was very the cast was really goofy for the first half of the movie. They're really silly and goofy, 
And that kept it interesting. And the acting was really good. I mean, the characters were interesting. Uh, like Mad Men, where the characters were very unappealing and not interesting at all. It made a very boring film. Because most of it's with the... Uh, with the... Uh, the college kids. And Hal Holbrook's in it. I remember if I watched it with Dad, my dad was the same reaction when he saw uh, Riddle Fr Friday 13th. He said, what's Belty Palmer doing in this piece of shit? Or like, um, he did a couple times. I think Gates of Hell, what's George, uh, Christopher George doing in this piece of shit? And then he did that in uh, Happy Birthday Me, which is a really good slash for us. What's Glenn Ford doing in this piece of shit? He would probably say, what's Hal Holbrook doing in this piece of shit? Well, anyways, um, if you were seeing it, cause I just saw it today. I, I mean, I'm going to put uh, uh, the night before I start my prep. I'm going to put this up, I don't know, Thursday or Friday, whenever. Um, and, and the characters, I mean, they're real goofy, but they're very interesting. And they play the goofy characters. Like, it, was, it wasn't it was super funny, but it was kind of funny and entertaining. It kept the movie going along. And then eventually it starts getting more serious, but it was so silly because... The killer eventually uh, dons, uh, just wears the mascot costume. He just dons, and so you see, like this bear with the crazy eyes and a tongue hanging out, killing people, and talk. Is like, he talks on the phone, like uh, number one is dead, and then Kathy and Chris are twins now. You know, and he talks to this DJ that's doing like the uh, responsible for the scavenger hunt and giving the clues and stuff. And they actually play like legit songs from like the fifties, like. That yummy, yummy, I got love in my tummy and stuff like that. Legit songs. Instead of like, uh, there was a movie called Frozen Scream where Ever Continental used to have like a double feature movie. I've, I rented a couple of them. The only really good one I seen double feature that Continental Video had was Slayer and Scalps. Those were fantastic. They could have just released those individually, but they put them in a double feature. But that was a really bad one was Executioner 2 and Frozen Scream. And then Frozen Scream. Supposed to be in the 50s, they were playing a song supposed to be like Rock Around the Clock, and it, it was Jack Around the Shack. That was the dumbest thing I've ever heard. More. It sounded just like, but we're going to Jack Around the Shack. That was the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. One of the dumbest things. Well, anyways, the kill, I mean, I, I wanted to check the dates out when the movie came out, because it came out in 82. Now, the killer actually had, actually did something like a Nightmare on Elm Street, but Nightmare on Elm Street came out two years later. It had like this thing, um, like wrapped in tape like this, and like four knives coming out of it. And when a bear put it, it would be like its claw, and he could claw people. That kind of ripped off Nightmare on Elm Street, but Nightmare on Elm Street came out two years later. So that was a nod to Nightmare on Elm Street right there. They had the idea first. But no one saw this movie. I never heard of it till uh, I saw the documentary. Um, but it was really silly seeing that. You know, but I mean, it was still interesting. It was never boring. Very anticlimactic. And then whenever you saw the killer, like, what the hell? It was kind of, it was really silly. It was so funny. I didn't believe that. I mean, it was, it was silly. My dad probably had been like, Jay, that is goddamn stupid. But it was very, it was dumb, but it was very entertaining. Now, the movie Curtains was stupid. Despite having the great John Vernon in it. Because they had a thing about most under... And they had curtains in there. Curtains was lousy. That was dumb. But this one was kind of dumb, but very entertaining in its own way. But very... Uh, just that ending was so silly. For silliness and uh, entertainment, not a great slasher film. But for serious uh, silliness and entertainment, I give it a 7.5 out of 10 for a girl's night out. A very obscure uh, slash film I just found out about. Cause I'm trying to be a completist watching all the 80s uh, slasher films. I still want to see... Uh, I saw a song and scream a long time ago. I would love to see that again. That's what I'm looking at, trying to really find. Cause I, that was a tough one to find. I rented it from the place, uh, local video store. I was in... Was it on break from Germany? Or was I on break? I might have been when I was on break from Germany, I think. And I loved it. Avery Schreiber and Cameron Mitchell were in there. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to look see if I can find some other obscure uh, slasher films. I've seen most of them. Like, so I didn't see Curtains until like a few years back with Dad. And, it, and the Curtains was really dumb. Um, <clears throat> so, I guess that's it, everybody. I hope you liked this little review. Well, almost a 10-minute review of Girls' Night Out, obscure slasher film. 
So if you're completist, it's on YouTube. It's entertaining. It's not a great slasher film, but it's entertaining and it's kind of silly. But I mean, it's not boring. That's the biggest thing. That's the problem I have with Mad Men. It's just so damn boring. One or two creative kills, but that was it. But at least this one maintained its entertainment value. So until next time, bye. Please take care of my legion.